Not too long ago, Zumbinis enjoyed the good life. Though they all looked slightly different, different eyes, noses, hair, feet, such differences meant nothing to the Zumbinis. And so they lived happily on Zumbini Isle, making small, useful products which were prized the world over. The Zumbinis had a sense of fulfillment and inner peace not to mention healthy bank accounts. Then one day, who should show up but the bloats? The bloats offered to help the Zumbinis grow their businesses, expand their trade routes, and improve their quality of life. Being trusting sorts, the Zumbinis agreed. But before long, the bloats had taken over everything. Stealing profits, canceling holidays, piling on work. The Zumbinis were getting pretty stressed out. Well, you can push them only so far before they take matters into their own hands, uh, so to speak. So they decided to escape and build a new home in a distant land. Now perhaps you're wondering what all this has to do with you. <laughs> Don't you see? You are the only one who can help them escape. Quickly, help them begin their journey. Only 16 at a time will fit in the boat. Hello everybody, my name is Colorful Arty. Praise be to God on this amazing day and welcome to a new Let's Play of mine. The Logical Journey of the Zumbinis. This is a game that I have wanted to Let's Play for a very long time now. Pretty much since I started my channel, I wanted to Let's Play this, but the problem was this game is old enough to not run on my current operating system, but new enough that it wouldn't run on things like DOSBox or ScumVM. So it took a lot of time and I had to jump through very, very many hoops, but I finally got Windows XP running on my virtual box. And I had to jump for even more hoops, but now I can finally run the game and record it. And I'm so excited too. This is a very, very fun game. And I just want to point out how amazing the art is in this game. Everything looks like it's a painting. Like, the waves right there, those look straight out of Starry Nights by Van Gogh. It's amazing. Just it's so pretty. So this is essentially a puzzle but game mixed with a point and click game. It's it's a basically we take a bunch of these zumbinis, these little blue creatures, and we take them across a long and very strange land and solving logical puzzles along the way to get to a new city for them to build. Now, you also probably saw that I already had a folder <laughs> on this. Well, that was because I actually recorded the first three episodes of this until I realized that the recordings got screwed up and they were filtering out the color white and replacing it with black. Which, that wasn't good, so I decided to re-record these. Anyhow, that's the backstory, let's get into this. So, you've got these three buttons over here. This green button, which is grayed out, means go to the next land. And we can't go until we make 16 Zumbinis with this editor. The map will pull us up to the main menu, or the overworld map. And then this is what will basically give you a little a hint as to what you need to do in this given area. So let's click this. Zumbini Isle. This is where we currently are. Zumbini Isle is a place where you recruit each band of escaping Zumbinis. A total of 16 Zumbinis are needed to start each trip. 
Only two Zumbinis with the same exact features can be recruited throughout an entire game. Select a Zumbini by clicking on the different features in the lower left box until it has the features you want. To choose a random recruit, click on the dice icon underneath the Zumbini. To quickly and automatically recruit 16 Zumbinis, hold down the shift key and click on the dice icon. A full band of Zumbinis will automatically appear from the cave, ready for their first adventure. I actually never knew that. That's pretty cool. A Zumbini can also be placed back in the cave if you decide to choose a Zumbini with different features. To continue the game, click on the go arrow button in the bottom right of the screen. So every time you go to a new uh, level, this will tell you different things. So this game is essentially divided up into worlds. Each world has three logical puzzles to solve before you reach a checkpoint in your journey. If you fail any of those logical puzzles, you will have to start back from the last checkpoint. In that, this current case, that will be Zumbini Isle. And also, every single puzzle has four different difficulties. There's not so easy, oh so hard, very hard, and very, very hard. The game starts on not so easy and gradually gets uh, increasing difficulty the more times you play through it. Anyhow, that's the basics of the game. Now let's move on to these Zumbinis. So you can see here we've got like a Zumbini custom uh, creator. You've got five different hairs, five different eyes, five different noses, and five different feet. This is spiky hair. That's a ponytail, that's a bowl cut, that's a bald tuft, and that's green hat hair. These are normal eyes, that's uh, cyclops eyes, sleepy eyes or tired eyes, glasses and sunglasses, green nose, orange nose, red nose, purple nose, blue nose, and then pink shoes, roller skates, sprain, bicycle, and propeller. And then you can click the dice icon and it'll automatically create a Zumbini for you, and all you have to do is click this arrow to make it appear out of the cave. And like the guy said, Every single possible combination of Zumbini, there are two of them that you need to get through. So every Zumbini has a twin. So I'm going to start by making me. I've kind of got the spiky hair, especially in the summertime when it gets humid and my hair puffs out. I, I like the sunglasses. I'm a cool guy. Uh, my favorite color is green. And I do like, I do like uh, using my bicycle. That's actually, that looks pretty good. That's me, everybody. Alright, I'll also make Marty. She's kind of got longer hair, glasses. She likes purple, and I'll, I'll make her fly. Beautiful. Alright, so now the rest we can just create here. Wow, we're getting a lot of purple noses. And the Zumbinis you take with you, their features can effect, have an effect on the logical puzzles. Because some of the logical puzzles will require you to make connections between Zumbini features, or things like that. Also, this Let's Play is going to be divided up into two different parts. This first part will be me going through every world in the game on every difficulty level, just to show that I can bring all the Zumbinis through it in one go. And then the second part of this Let's Play, I will be going through every single of the logical challenges on every single difficulty, giving you the best possible strategy for solving it consistently. I hope that'll be entertaining and informative. We have our band of 16, so let's go. And I love that sound effect. That's beautiful. After days tossed about by a stormy sea, the Zumbinis reach the shore of a peculiar land. The music also complements the uh, game perfectly. So this is the first world, the big, the bad, and the hungry, and this is the first logical challenge of the world, the Allergic Cliffs. Let's start by getting some info on this. The Allergic Cliffs. The Allergic Cliffs play by certain rules. What one cliff accepts, the other is allergic to. Look for one feature, such as a red nose, that does not cause an allergic reaction. Pretty simple. So you can see two bridges crossing this cliff side. You also can see that in these cliffs, you can see little faces here. Yeah, that's actually part of the logical puzzle. You see, 
One of these guys is going to be allergic to a specific Zumbini feature, such as the red nose, like it said, or it could be Cyclops' eyes. We don't know. Most of the Zumbinis will be able to cross one of these bridges, except those Zumbinis with that feature, whereas the Zumbinis with that feature are the only ones who can cross the other bridge. So you can kind of think of it as one stone head is allergic to a specific feature, and then the other one is allergic to everything except that one specific feature. So, as far as strategy goes, just start by picking a random Zumbini I'll take myself, and cross the bridge. So I was able to cross no problem. Awesome. So there's something about me that he liked. I believe this cliff on this difficulty will always be allergic to one feature, and then this cliff will always be allergic to everything but the one feature. So maybe this guy likes green noses, so let's try green noses. Uh-oh. As you can see, he just sneezed at me, so that all, not only blew me backwards so I couldn't cross the bridge, it also knocked one of these six pegs out. These six pegs are what are holding up the bridges, so if they get six sneezes, then all six of those pegs will be knocked out, and these bridges are going to collapse, preventing our Zumbinis from crossing, and then only the Zumbinis who have successfully crossed can actually proceed to the next puzzle. You can see, I have the option to proceed to the next puzzle right here, with only me having completed it. That is not a good idea, though, because then all 15 of these guys will be left behind and will be ported back to Zumbini Isle, or wherever your last checkpoint was. Also, once you reach the next checkpoint, you can't proceed unless you have a group of 16. So if, even if I made it all the way to the next checkpoint, I wouldn't be able to go any further until we get 15 more Zumbinis across. Also, the world will not increase in difficulty, nor will you get a special prize at the end end unless you get all 16 Zumbinis across in one go. So this guy got sneezed across this bridge, so that means he can go up on the upper bridge. So there's something about this guy that he didn't like, and it wasn't the green nose, but it could be roller skates, the bull cut, or normal eyes. Let's see if it's the bull cut. It appears that's what it is. Everybody with a bull cut, go up here. All right, and I guess everybody without a bull cut can go down here. Well, that was pretty easy. Whoa, my! You've done exceptionally well. Carry on, carry on! Well, thank you, Mr. Narrator. Very kind of you. So now we got all 16 guys across, and we actually only screwed up once, which is pretty much optimal for this puzzle. That's pretty cool. Let's go forward. These stone guards have their rules, so do proceed with skill. Zumbini's one guard won't allow. The other guard surely will. We've got visitors! Do we let him in? So as you saw there, we had the overworld map of the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry, and it was charting our journey that we were taking. So this is the second logical challenge of the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry. The Stone Cold Caves. Stone Cold Caves? The Cave Guardians have a reaction to certain Zumbinis, just like the allergic cliffs. What one Guardian likes, the opposite Guardian does not. For example, if the left Guardian accepts Spring Feet, the right Guardian will reject this feature. The same goes for the upper and lower Guardians. Look for one feature, such as a red nose, that a cave guardian accepts or rejects. Try figuring out what the right and left guardians like first, and then try the upper or lower guardians. Also one thing that doesn't tell you is on the easiest difficulty, which is what we're playing on right now, one of the upper or lower guardians will essentially be out of commission. And one of these guards is going to accept every single Zumbini, and then the opposite one is going to reject every single Zumbini. So essentially, this is going to be with the allergic cliffs. We only have to worry about this guy and this guy. Also, it's, this is actually probably easier than the allergic cliffs, because you saw the allergic cliffs, you had six pegs, so if you screwed up six times, you had to either bring them all back to the last checkpoint or carry on with only the Zumbinis you got across. Well, here, I believe you get something like 20 chances to screw up. 
Every time uh, a guardian rejects you, he's going to slam the ground and knock you down the stairs. And if he does that enough, it will cause an earthquake, which will cause a cave-in, blocking the entrances to these four caves, preventing the Zumbinis from going forward. So, another good way to start, just take a Zumbini. I will take um, Umeswai, which is apparently my name, and let's try going here. Can't let you in. So he did not like me for one reason or another. That means there's either one feature that I have that he doesn't like, or I don't have the one feature he does like. So that means I can go over here. Mm, okay. Have a good time. Yes, on not so easy, this guardian right here tends to reject every single Zumbini, and this guy tends to accept every single Zumbini. And this guy's name is Onyx, I believe, so that's cool. So maybe she likes bicycles. Let's try this guy. That seems to be... Nope. Nope. Alright. Well, since that guy had nothing in common with me except the bicycle, and she rejected a different guy with a bicycle, clearly it's not she likes bicycles. There must be something about this guy that she didn't like, which is why she knocked him away. So that means he can go over here. Don't be shy. And just so you know, if I tried putting any of these Zumbinis on the upper path, she would knock them all down. Alright, so there's something about this guy that she didn't like. It could either be the Cyclops Eye or the Blue Nose. Regardless, this guy should be able to go this way. Let's try Blue Noses. Nope. Alright, it looks like this guy will only accept Cyclopses. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I love their British voices. Okay. All right, and everyone else should be able to go this way. How fortunate for Zumbinis that you are their guide. <laughs> this narrator guy is awesome. I love him. So yeah, that's the Stone Cold Caves. Pretty simple level. You should have very little trouble with this level on the earlier difficulties. Even if you basically just randomly do stuff, you should be able to pass. No problem. You've done quite well. How delightful. <laughs> and so our brave travelers continue on through this dusty wasteland until they meet Arno, the almost omnivorous, one very hungry pizza troll. Flings? You're not flings. Huh. Whatever you are, make me a pizza. <laughs> so welcome to the last logical challenge of the big, the bad, and the hungry. Pizza Pass. This is what most people remembered this puzzle from the game, and this is, stands out as most people's favorite one, myself included. So this is Arno, the almost omnivorous. He's a pizza troll, and he is essentially a giant stump. And he's also hilarious and extremely quotable. So let's get some advice on this one. Pizza Pass. Arno desperately needs a pizza. Make his favorite pizza and he'll let the Zumbinis pass. Build your pizza and be aware of what Arno likes and dislikes. If a pizza has a topping that Arno hates, he'll throw it into the reject pit. He'll throw pizzas missing one or more of his favorite toppings onto his rock. Arno is a finicky eater and he won't necessarily like the same pizza the next time you see him. So yes, Arno has different tastes every time he wants. So we've got this nice pizza machine here, which allows us to custom make a pizza. He wants a pizza with everything he wants on it and nothing he doesn't. If he gets a pizza that has even one thing on it he does not like, he'll say, oh, like there's something on that I don't want, and he'll throw it in the pit. If there's a pizza that arrives for him where there are at least two things on it he doesn't like, he'll be like, yuck, and then again, throw it into this pit. <laughs> also, if you give him a pizza that has some stuff on it that he likes, but not everything, he'll throw it onto his rock and ask for more toppings. Whereas if we give him a pizza with everything he likes on it and nothing he doesn't, he will say, oh, yes. <sighs> oh. <laughs> he'll say, like, oh, yes, and then take it onto his rock, eat it, and then we can pass. And also, I will be the one delivering the pizza. So let's try making a simple cheese pizza. Pretty much everybody likes cheese on pizza, unless they're lactose intolerant. Which Arno might be. More toppings! Alright. 
We know he likes cheese, though, so what about mushrooms? Something on that I don't like! So he does not like mushrooms, so he's going to throw that into the dump. Now we've got pepperoni. More toppings! Ooh, he likes cheese and pepperoni. He's a man after my own heart. That's my ideal pizza right there. And we've got bell peppers. Or maybe Serrano peppers, I don't know. Come on! More stuff! Okay, I will I do not like spicy peppers on mine. Well how about black olives? How do you feel about black olives? More! Alright, so he likes everything except mushrooms. Also, he can only hold three toppings on his rock. So he just threw that one over the cheese one, so you'll have to just remember. So he likes cheese, pepperoni, peppers, and olives. This will be the pizza that he wants. Also, if you uh, take too long in making him the pizza, every time you make him a pizza that is not the one he wants, he gets more impatient. Once his impatience reaches a certain amount, he will smack the Zumbini serving him and knock him into the pizza machine. That is essentially his warning, and that means every single pizza you make after this one that is not the one he wants, he will smack the server Zumbini all the way back to Zumbini Isle, and then the next Zumbini in your lineup will have to make stuff for him. And again, that just means every single time you get something wrong, he's just going to smack you all the way back to Zumbini Isle, and you'll have to leave without them. But that's not going to happen. This is the pizza he wants. Oh, my pizza! and trusted guide. And Arlo is full, and now we can cross. Hold on! What's this? A campsite with hot soup all ready to eat? Looks like a fine place for Zumbinis to relax! But when they're ready to move on, they'll need a group of 16 along the path. So, welcome to the first checkpoint in the journey, Shelter Rock. This is essentially a nice little checkpoint, which means in one of the preceding worlds, if Zumbinis get knocked back here, or we click the map and lose the Zumbinis, they will go back here into these nice little cubby holes. We can also just put them in the cubby holes and wait for another group to come here, and then we can essentially merge the two groups if we wanted. We can only take 16 men at a time, though, but you can kind of be like, well, I don't want this guy coming along, I want different Zumbinis, and you can sort them out later. Your choice. Let's get a little information. After traveling far, the Zumbinis have a quiet place to rest. You can also store Zumbinis in the shelter for a later trip. You'll need to have 16 Zumbinis placed on the stones lining the path before the entire group can continue their journey. To store Zumbinis, place them in the slots built into the hill. Click on fin bar the fin bars to the left and right to scroll through the shelter. It grows to fit as many Zumbinis as you bring to camp. So you don't have to worry about running out of space. If you get too many Zumbinis, this will magically get bigger, which is pretty cool. Actually, that's very cool. You also see there's a fork in the road, and we can go up or down. Each of those directions will take us to a different world with three unique logical puzzles. As you can see, if we go north, we'll be heading into a swamp area, whereas if we head south, we'll be heading into some woods. So that's pretty cool. And I will now show off the map icon. This brings us to the world map. You can see the journey we've already made. You can also see how many Zumbinis are still in Zumbini Isle, how many are in Shelter Rock, how many are in the Shade Tree, which that's the second checkpoint, and then how many will reach Zumbiniville, which is our final destination. You also see there's Continue Journey Mode and then Practice Mode. Practice Mode allows us to play any logical puzzle, even the ones we haven't encountered yet, on any difficulty we please. And that's essentially just a practice to make sure we're good enough for when we actually make the journey themselves. If we also wanted, we could go back to Zumbini Isle, make a new group of 16, and go for the Big, the Bad, and the Hungry again. Because we got for the Big, the 
bad in the hungry on not so easy, which is the easiest difficulty, and got all 16 through. That means when we arrive at Zumbiniville, we're going to get a special item there. And that also means if we can do that again with the new 16 Zuminis, get all them all through, the difficulty on this area will up to oh so hard, and that gives us an opportunity for another item in Zumbiniville, which is pretty cool. Also, if you click this stab, uh, slab here, you can start a new game, you can load game, quit, save game, you can also have these toggle tools, or view the credits if you want. I'm going to save this over Artie's Quest, which is the, my previous attempt at playing, uh, <laughs> let's play in this game. We're going to save, and it says, are you sure you want to replace Artie's Quest, because there's something just like that? Yes, I am sure. Excellent. And that's all the time we have for this episode. I'm going to divide these episodes, at least in this first part, into I will do a world per video. So this will hopefully keep the videos well under a half hour long, just long enough I think that people will stay interested, and that'll divide up the time I spent very nicely. So thanks for watching, I'm Colorful Hardy. I hope to see you for the next episode. We'll be going to a brand new world and solving three more awesome logical puzzles. I hope to see you then, have a great day, and God bless.